ReZero Review Analysis. This is Season 2, Episode 8, The Snow Bunnies from Mr. Kid Nuts. Let's get it. If I had one complaint about this episode... Is that it was a 10 out of 10 episode. I would be a liar because it was perfect. Yes. I didn't expect White Fox to be able to outdo Episode 4, but they did. Mm -hmm. This was the best episode of Season 2 thus far, and it... Yep, and it's gonna keep getting better. It's gonna be 20 out of 10 next episode. ...will go down as one of the greatest episodes of the entire series. This episode contained a lot of parallels to Season 1, Episode 15, which is what I believe to be the greatest episode of all time. And it... And not just ReZero, the greatest episode of anime of all time, I think, is the argument being brought up with 15. A lot of people say this. Looks like they took a lot of inspiration from that episode and did some amazing things with it. But yeah, I, I did notice the credits for sure, right? The, the credits, I definitely saw it running, but like... Walking alone in the snow? Are we reaching? Are we reaching? No, I don't think we're reaching. Otto dying. Rem, right? Walking in the snow, credits rolling. There were definitely a lot of similarities, a lot of inspirations from 15. Fit. But let's start right from the beginning. Apparently, Otto's green outfit helps him camouflage in the bushes. I don't know. I yes, just... only Ram can figure it out. I thought this was a hilarious frame. The scene with Roswell was very good as well. I love how the background music makes me feel like I'm playing a horror game. Mm-hmm. It is so intense. Every time we go to talk to Roswell, my favorite scenes in season two is whenever it's Roswell and Subaru dialogue. Ro uh, Subaru Beak was also very en engaging too. Yeah, I kid this stuff, but like I've been just so obsessed with Roswell content since season one, and every episode we're getting a little bit more little, just a bit, just giving a little bit more hints as to how he could possibly know Subaru's regression. And now he mentions the Tomb of Wisdom. Two copies as the true grimoire that actually shows the direct path with good details of how to get to that future. And then the defect, which most likely Betrigus was using, which shows a very obscure path. It's kind of vague and abstract, and you got to figure out it yourself. So at that point, I think Rosal probably has the other grimoire, right? Like, this guy is also acting in ways that the answers is. There's no answers to his contradicting, you know, uh, moves. I think everything is hinting that this guy also is simply obeying by the gospel and is regressing along with Subaru, I think is my theory right now. It kind of feels like a jump scare could happen at any moment, and mm -hmm. considering Roswell's personality, that probably isn't much of a stretch. We did get a lot of information about Beatrice, though. Roswell promises that Beatrice isn't a witch cultist and claims that her gospel is actually a magical text that tells the future of which the true only two future. copies exist. That's he right. He also mentions another book named the Tome of Wisdom. Yep. What this is, we have no idea, but it... I'm gonna assume the Tome of Wisdom is the... Holy Grail Golden Standard that is the true future. The two copies, the Grimoires that Biko and maybe Roswell has is a copy of that Tomb of Wisdom, which is a little bit more inferior product. And then everything else is a defect. Does sound like one of those important details that they wouldn't just include. Or maybe Roswell has the Tomb of Wisdom. Let's not limit ourselves to the Grimoire. Or maybe Roswell just has a regular defect gospel, and he just doesn't know what he's doing either. The Tomb of Wisdom. The Tomb... Who could... It... Wiseman. Sage. Flugel. I'm trying to think of like, how could the Tomb of Wisdom even begin? Well, I know wisdom, wise, wise men. There is the Council of Wise Men and Lugunica, but they're just a bunch of fucking dumb boomers, right? Or maybe, um underestimating how smart, you know, people like Miklotov really is, but tomb, tomb, which is graveyard, tomb, death, graveyard. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Food for no reason. Roswell then reminds Subaru to ask Beatrice. A kid that knows almost everything. She, she's greedy for knowledge, but she has a lot of missing knowledge because she hasn't been outside for 400 years. Maybe the dra- I still don't know how to fuck the dragon like place into this story other than like a covenant making you know, uh, uh, like the royalty making a covenant with the dragon and the dragon supposedly trying to fucking be, like come save us when the kingdom is in need. But ugh, Tomb of Wisdom, I'm going to guess that maybe Flugil is the one that wrote the Tomb of Wisdom because he is the sagest of the wisest men of them all. Tris, the question. We still don't know what this question is, but at least now we know the answer. 
I am that person is the oh. correct answer to Beatrice's question. <laughs> Who is the biggest lolicon in Lugunica? Reinhardt, and it's not even close. And apparently, according to her contract, she has to ally with whoever gives her the correct answer. It's all still a very confusing situation, but I think it's starting to become a little bit more clear, and it sounds like Beatrice might have a big role to play this. Absolutely. There, there's a huge bombshell secret with Beatrice. We, we don't know exactly why she's so sad and depressed and locked up into the library except the contract that she has. But at this point, she's waiting for someone to appear based on Roswell's lines to give to Biko, right? Roswell has to ask the question. I am that person. Biko is waiting for somebody. But exactly for what? Why does she need to be saved? What is she waiting for? What does she even need to be saved from? Like, what the fuck is going on with you, Biko? Season. Anyway, remember, Otto can communicate with plants and animals, so yep. when Garfield knocks over this tree, Otto probably heard everything. Yeah, Otto can literally understand trees. And if last episode didn't establish it well enough, we are once again reminded that Otto truly is best boy. Otto convinced the villagers to help Subaru, proving mm -hmm. that he really is a good friend. He even sacrifices himself yep. to save Subaru, and it Rip kind of Otto. feels wrong to say this, but Otto's death was an amazing scene. It was shocking, brutal, and uncensored, and it established Garfield as a major threat whose beast- And I am kind of worried. Because Otto, I feel like he's the perfect candidate to that could actually die, and then we could have a real checkpoint made after that. I think that- Subaru's close friend Otto dying in the future could be a significant death that actually matters to the story. Like 100% be because of how close Otto is getting and he is kind of like the source of a comedic relief and slice of life shit. I can 100% see a future where this is going to be a monumental character death that actually plays into the story. Maybe I'm wrong, but I'm like Otto coming to the story makes me worried and nervous because the more things that's like good for us and positive like, look at Rem, bro. Look what happened to Rem. Like, for sure something bad could happen. Major threat, whose beast form, by the way, is way cooler, scarier, and stronger than Frederica's. Gar yeah, because it's quarter blood versus half blood. Come on, man. Because Garfield then kills Patrash as well, and at this point... I what did you just say? Frederica's. Garfield then kills Patrash as well. What is this guy's deal? Oh, a, a, a kid that hates Patrash. What the hell? Patrash is so good. Patrash has shown us time after time. And this isn't even the first time Patrash has clutched for us. Remember season one? Finale? Covering us from the fucking explosion? Just helping us fight against the Saint Arc Bishop of Sloth? Patrash got a hidden. What do you mean? Well, and at this point, I think we were kind of expecting that to happen. But that still didn't make it any less heartbreaking. That's messed up. And then he gets ported. Boom. Even though I knew what was going to happen in this next scene, I still got the chills when Subaru walked outside and saw the snow. Subaru mm -hmm. has been through a similar situation before. When yep. it starts snowing for no reason... Puck might be out, ready to destroy the world. It usually means Amelia is dead. Yep. However, Puck hasn't shown up since the first episode, so again, I think we're left with three options. The rabbits ate Puck. One, Puck is back. Yeah, and then uh, we just simply don't see Puck in his huge gigant form, which I honestly makes a lot of sense. Like, do you, you need to see Puck just tall as hell? Not really. Two, someone other than Puck is responsible for- Hmm, but there's nothing that's shown. For sure that could be a case, but I don't want to believe it because there hasn't been anything to show us that- Snow can just happen like that, right? For the snow. Or three, the snow is naturally occurring and has no relevance to the plot other than symbolism. <laughs> True. <laughs> could be just a snowy day. <laughs> nah, there's gotta be a reason. You tell me out of nowhere it just starts snowing? Especially when all the villagers are back? Listen, I could definitely entertain these two options. But here's the thing. Why are all the villagers gone, right? We're not thinking beyond just the snow existing. No one else in the village is here anymore. Everything is emptied out. What does that suggest? The rabbits are fucking killing everything, right? Right? But whatever the explanation may be, snow in ReZero is generally a bad sign, especially when everyone's missing from the sanctuary. Mm -hmm. At this point, the mansion has already been compromised, and Otto, Patrash, and most likely Ram- Stop! 
Stop it! What are you doing to him? ...are all dead as well. Subaru seems to be the only one left at the sanctuary, and the weather implies that the world might be ending. So there is literally no point for Subaru to be alive anymore. He yeah, but the curiosity makes him walk around to see what's going on, right? ...knows that he should be dead right now, yet for some reason, he isn't. In the words of the web novel, he couldn't die until he had found something to justify his prolonged life. <laughs> You're about to see a lot of those... Oh yeah, multiple, millions even. In other words, he didn't have the will to live, but instead, the resolve to die. Now, the disappearance of everyone in the sanctuary is definitely suspicious, and it's something we might want to be thinking about, but Subaru didn't really- I think the answer is in front of us as to why everyone has gone. Maybe they escaped, or maybe the rabbit ate them all. If the rabbit ate them all, wouldn't there be a lot of blood around there? The lack of the details of the gore is kind of weird. But also, plenty of time could have passed, and everything could be buried under snow as well. ...really have time because a much more immediate threat emerged. <laughs> Subaru is forever gonna get traumatized by the bunny from now on. But Subaru was traumatized by Rem too, with the chain, you know, her weapon. I think he's gotten kind of over it by now. It'll be interesting to see the next time we actually see a bunny rabbit in the show that is not this bunny, you know? Like, just like a regular bunny to see Subaru's uh, reaction to it. Aww. Oh! <laughs> Subaru crosses paths with that- And it's so troll because they didn't show a more detailed horn. I was like, is this a witch fiend? Maybe it's just a cute rabbit. But the horn, right? Anything, every witch beast has a fucking horn. And if you break the horn, you can actually control the witch beast. Which is like, bam, maybe we should have tried breaking off the horn of the white whale. If we were to break off the horn of one single rabbit, what about the other rabbits too? I don't know how that would work. Dreaded rabbit everyone's been hyping up. It's the only other living creature he's seen for a while, so he tries to pet it. And right as he reaches out his hand, if you listen carefully, you can hear all the web novel readers shouting no. No, God, please, oh God. no, 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 This was one of the most brutal scenes in ReZero, and I've been looking forward to it for a long time. I know a lot of novel readers were concerned about things like censorship and CGI, oh God, but after man. seeing this episode, I think we can all breathe a sigh. Man, look at the bones at the rib cages, man of relief because this adaptation was very impressive this is probably super oh yeah we saw right there remember the descriptions the rabbit the rabbits were literally within his skin they're inside of him right now eating away probably subaru's most painful oh. death so far being eaten alive by rabbits crawling oh. around inside his body devouring him from both the inside and the outside that's just extremely terrifying and oh. obviously they couldn't show this detail but in the web novel the rabbits actually entered Subaru's body through both his mouth and, and the booty and his ass <laughs> just fucking eat my brain first bro what are you doing just kill me just Eat the brain! Why are you doing everything but the brain? So what the hell are these things? Well, they've all got horns poking at it. It's a witch fiend, and most likely one of the calamity beasts, along with the white whale and the black serpents, that's hinted by the passage from Echidna, right? The witch of gluttony, Daphne, created these things. ...their head, so that would imply they're another species of mob beast. What's important, though, is that... Purple ass. The, what's important is the purple halo on its ass like the white whale. Subaru now has yet another obstacle to overcome this season. That's right. He's still got to save the mansion, defeat Elsa, defeat mm -hmm. Garfield, and now he has to defeat an army of demon... And not even that. Amelia has to clear the trial, too, and fucking remove the barrier. Like, there's so many things that we have to do, but remember... Just like in Arc 3, when things seem impossible, just think about what could happen if we do overcome it. Think about what kind of next level hero Subaru is going to be if he does overcome it. Bunnies too. Oh, and we can't forget about the trials, can we? Here we go. Who created the beast that defied the will of God to save the world from starvation? Is this a fucking sick joke? Daphne wanted to save the world from starvation, so created a witch beast here. So what, we eat the rabbits? And there's a lot of rabbits? You're saving us for starvation? Is this a sick joke? The rabbits are eating us! 
Starvation? I wish we can die from starvation at this point instead of the rabbits. Defeat Garfield, and now he has to defeat an army of demon bunnies too. Oh, and we can't forget about the trials, can we? Yes, Dona gives him the qualifications to take the second trial, so I'm assuming we'll get to see that soon. The first trial was to face his past. Oh, three separate qualifications for the trials? I thought the qualification in context here was to see the witch at the witch the tea party due to his desire to know what happened. Why, 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 why? But Echidna now, Echidna saying, telling me, you know, there's, you know, there's three trials. So this is the second qualification that we've earned. Uh, maybe both can be true. Maybe both can be true. I'm not sure. Asked, and there's supposed to be three total, so the next trial might deal with another aspect of his character, or maybe someone else's past, or even the future. But it sounds like this time, even after the trial is complete, Dona will allow Subaru to keep his memories. That's her. right. During this conversation, we learn more about. Well, not even the trial, just like this tea party, right? About Dona herself. She's got this endless curiosity and likes to learn as much information as possible, so now her title, Witch of Greed, is starting to make more sense. That's right. Uh, nothing like a nice cup of witch piss. Dona explains that the body fluid tea helped stabilize the sloth factor inside mm -hmm. of Subaru, and apparently that saved him. Stabilize the sloth factor? I thought it was stimulate the sloth factor, which makes him able to use authority of sloth, but then also improves the resistance in the first pass. And the second pass, she says, improved the stability, which I assumed was his mental strength, the resilience to not just like break under trauma. But is this a stability of the sloth factor? I don't, I didn't interpret it that way based on the subtitles that I read. Him from impending doom. But what follows this conversation is probably one of the greatest- Is he just gaslighting me right now? With both the qualification and the stability of the witch factor? I'm not gonna- I'm gonna trust the subtitles right now instead of him at the moment. This moments in all of ReZero. I can return by death, BB. Oh. Uninterrupted by Satella, Subaru tells Dona that he's been returning by death, and she <laughs> listens to him and understands. This must have been such an amazing feeling for Subaru. Like a Ever relief. since he came to this world, he hasn't been able to tell anyone the truth. Yep. But now, he's found someone he can confide in. He found the only person in this world that he can be honest with. Echidna. Finally, Subaru lets out the truth and breaks down, crying tears of relief. Amelia could never, man. Truly, Amelia could never. He's still struggling with the first trial, man. Echidna here, just <laughs> then again, who created the trials? Echidna did. <laughs> Anyways, I think that there's something interesting here with how Amelia died, but she does, but Echidna didn't after this. Because obviously, we're in a different dimension. We're like this ethereal realm territory, right? And this is like Echidna's domain. Is there really no way that Satala can show up? Did Satala even hear it? Are we just like ghosting Satala right now? Think of it like this. Imagine Satala as an obsessive girlfriend stalking that is a GPS placed into Subaru. And outside of this place, Satala can know exactly where Subaru is. But within here, it's like the GPS is gone and he's gone MIA. I don't know. I'm just trying to give an analogy that could make sense. Does Satala know that he's in here? Would she be jealous and envious that he told Echidna about the secret that was never supposed to be told to anyone and most likely is the reason why Amelia died in the first time? I don't know. And whenever Subaru cries, it makes me want to cry too, but it's usually because something really sad happened. However, this time... Frozen Bond captions. I teared up because I was just so happy for him. This therapeutic moment with Echidona shattered the loneliness that's been plaguing Subaru all this time. Echidona, baby. I can only imagine the solace and comfort Subaru must have felt realizing that there's someone out there who un understands him. Understands him for sure, but you know what I was thinking? Echidna is simply just greedy for knowledge, and this is not like an angel saving someone from their despair. Now, you don't need to be an angel to save him from despair. You can. Help him while being, I don't know, getting some mutual benefit at the same time. She's literally using him. He's like, I want to know. I want to, like, like, in the moment, I'm like, this is very wholesome. But a part of me was like, hmm, you know, the desires of her knowledge is the reason why she's even helping. It's not because, like, she loves you or anything. Eh. 
realizing that there's someone out there who understands him. The VA's performance here was one of his very best in the entire series, and the same applies to the music as well. This amazing OST life. felt like a reverse positive form of Requiem of Silence from- Oh, yeah, there is a lot of parallels for 15 in this one, and the soundtrack too, maybe you're right. Episode 15. And the credits rolling down at the end was another amazing addition, and I'm so, so impressed with everything they did here. I think this was the best episode of anime I've seen this entire year. This I wasn't watching anime when this was airing. When was this shit? Like four years ago? Yeah, I was too busy probably studying or working. Episode has restored the hope to everyone. What was airing during this era? Is there any huge animes that was like airing in 2020? It was straight up after I just like watched, you know, the big top, big three battle shonens. And then I just stopped watching anime. I was just too busy with life. Attack on Titan was airing? <laughs> what the f- Attack on Titan is amazing, but is it? Uh, ReZero is also amazing. ...that doubted ReZero this season, and I now have complete faith that the rest of the season will continue to impress me. Okay. ReZero Season 2 has the potential to be anime of the year this season, and I'm not just saying that because it's- Okay, what was the anime of the year? Anime of the year 2020. Well, there's a lot of bullshit awards, but I guess we gotta go with the Crunchyroll. Crunchyroll, anime... There it is. Kimetsu no Yaiba. <laughs> Makes sense. Uh, best animation, Mob Psych- Yo, Re- Is Zero here? Re Zero is not even- Re Zero is not even fucking showing up in the CTRL-F, bro. <laughs> Dororo, best character- Re Zero is not even on the list as a fucking nominee. Best comedy, Kaguya-sama. Isekai Quartet made it! <laughs> 2021? Is it? Anime of the year 2021? Hold up, is this- I'm watching 2020 right now. This is 2020 award, you fucking gaslight me. 2019, my ass, that's 2020! You blind? You told me 20 Vincent 2021? Okay, let's do this, 2021. Let's see 2021. Alright, 2021. JJK! Alright, first of all, does Reezer even exist here? It does! It does, okay! Wait! This is season one cover! I, I guess it still counts. They're using season one cover for, you know, second season two. But, uh, let's, let's, there's, there's a couple hits. But, oh, anime of the year was JJK. JJK, JJK. JJK was pretty good, I guess. Beastars, bro. Uh, best animation? Yeah, yeah, yeah. JJK and best antagonist. Here we go. For Echidna! <laughs> Skuna! Ryomen Sukuna beat Ekidona. Uh oh. Next. Haikyu. Haikyu, right? Best character design. Oh, Tower of God's on here. Tower of God's on here. Uh, best comedy. Kaguya-sama. Winner. Tonikawa. Director. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, where, where, where's the re zeros at? Okay, here it is. Best fantasy. Re zero, baby. <laughs> best fantasy. Best fight scene, is there anything else? This is nominated antagonist, right? Best fantasy. Uh, best VA performance for English. ReZero was also on there. Best VA performance Japanese actually won it for Natsuki Subaru. I think he deserves it. The male voice actor, Natsuki Subaru Japanese is fucking crazy. Uh, this is, again, antagonist stuff. That's pretty much it, I think, right? Yeah. So, it definitely won some awards, and my boy Natsuki Super voice acting up there. It's my favorite. But yes, ReZero is my favorite anime, so I can't even express how glad I am that it's getting such a great adaptation. The f I honestly think that ReZero is my favorite anime too. I'll have to let some time pass after season 3 has ended, because obviously we're, we've been on a ReZero marathon for the last month and a week. Just going so sweaty about ReZero. And of course, there's recency bias and a lot of dopamine rush because, you know, it's getting a lot of views too. So it's my, my perception on this is distorted. But, but, it's, it, it feels like it could be my favorite at this point. Like, like genuinely. The amount of investment that I have into the show to know all the fucking lore, even fucking side characters, bro. Like, I am literally studying side characters. The fact that, like, like the, like the Rickard guy from the Royal Selection thing, again, like, like, the example I gave you, like, like, I literally 
I'm stu I'm, I'm studying the opera dudes. Why? Like, this show is so good. I, the lore is so fucking good. Out of all anime, it's... I don't know. I don't know. There's this... Uh, Attack on Titan was an amazing monster, but like, ReZero is like... Oh, holy shit, man. Great adaptation. The first half of this episode was another 10, 10 out of 10, 10 yeah. but the second... Everything, but the second half is a 20 out of 10. Second half brought it up to a 14. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so what's the difference between 13 and a 14 out of 10? Hmm? So like, I, I just want to know, like, what makes a 14 versus a 13 out of 10? <laughs> I don't know if they can top this episode, but then again, I thought the same thing about episode 4, so I guess we'll just have to wait and see. Yeah. I'm really hyped for the rest of the season, and I'm curious to see what you guys thought about this. Now, obviously, it's the addition of one number, dummies, but I'm telling you, what constitutes towards that having one extra number? <laughs> I'm not asking you what is the difference between 14 and 13. I'm asking you what element of the story boosted it to that level. Does anyone agree with me? Was this the best episode of season 2 so far? Mmm. Probably is. Yeah, probably is. Yeah. Yeah. First episode was amazing just because we got Archbishop showing up and I have a lot of love for the cult and the Archbishops. That was hype, for sure. But is it the overall episode that amazing? Not necessarily. What other episodes has been... Like, the, the episode 4 he keeps bringing up, but, um... I, I really enjoyed the episode where we show up to the mansion. It was a whole ass battle and Elsa fucked us. That was like a really fun episode too. Of just us getting thrashed around. But episode 8 probably is the best so far. So far episode 8 probably is. Let me know in the comment section because I swear to god I still read every single comment. If you guys enjoy these reviews though, make sure you give the video a like to support this. Oh trust me brother, we are literally traveling across time. <laughs> Watching videos 4 years old to cover this content, but hey, please go check out Mr. Kid Nuts video. Sub to his channel, like this video if you haven't, and I'll see you next time.